My name is Kimball Hooker from the Bay Area. And the sounds of the guitar come in. I love it. Nothing better than to make somebody smile, especially through music. I just like to be a part of it. I never forget some of the people that I met. Super fine. Make it <laughs> Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Kimball Hooker and welcome to the Kimball Hooker Show. We have a very special guest today. I just want to introduce her and you're in for a very special treat. So many things we're going to talk about today all the way from her. You know what? I'm not even going to do that. I'm going to let, we're going to talk about it over time. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome the beautiful, Miss Talented, my friend, soon to be yours, Miss Samantha Alexis. Ooh. And the crowd goes wild. Dog. Right? <laughs> How you doing? Ooh, I'm good. I'm good. I made it here. You did. I'm good. That you know what? Just to get to that point was like a journey itself, right? That was icing on the cake. Icing on the cake. Yes. I love that cake. You know what I'm saying? You do. <laughs> you look beautiful. Oh, thank you. You know, like you. What I are you wearing? To... Well, I'm wearing uh my national sash, my regalia. That's what it's called. All right. You know. Okay. So I was state of California. Okay. And I came back the national queen. See how that works? See? National. All world beauties. Exactly. And you wear it well. Royal ambassador. Royalty is right here in front of us, y'all. Right. I right. love it. You wear it well. So Ooh. talk to us about the pageantry. How did you get started in it? Oh, my God. You know what? It's something that I actually hid. From everybody. Wait a minute. How you gonna hide something that's <laughs> like in everybody's face? You're so flamboyant with it. No, I, I wasn't always flamboyant. Talk to us. I used to be a little tomboy. See, I don't believe it. Really? Well, no, I was a tomboy. How you do that with all that beauty? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, well, the beauty. You can't hide that. Well, you know, it's like when you are in the neighborhood around people who are down. And you tell them something that you want to do a like a pageant, they look at you like, no, you can't do that. They don't see it. No. Well, for the longest time, I was told that you can't do it because you're black. Oh, OK. So All right. that was a big issue back then. Right. Because right. I came on the scene of pageantry when I was like 12 years old. OK. OK. So race so was prominent at that point. Race was real prominent. And OK. It was prominent, but mm -hmm. what was what made it so bad is when you have your own peers right. who are telling you you can't. Right. What are you thinking? Right. And you're, you're so young too. Right. You're foolish for yeah. thinking these things. And you got a tender mind when they should yeah. be encouraging you. And that's what you're having right, right there. Yeah. Right. So talk to us a little bit about that in terms of you know just dealing with you're so young, right? You're tender minded, right? Because you're 12, right? Right. And so back in those days, who is your protector? Your mom? My mom has always guided me in saying that, you know what, don't use the word can't. You can do anything right. that you set your mind to do. Right. You know, always have goals, always turn those goals into a plan. So that's the type of mind I've had. Right. From even younger than that. Right. So you're strong will. Yes. And it's, it's bad, though, when you have to hide right. your ambitions like that. But so I would, you know, watch them by myself not even my mom knew at first that i liked pageantry and i think it's because i used to be an athlete as well mm. so i love competition okay so pageantry is a competition right it's a i would say it's a form of, of competition is. absolutely you know i say pageant is another sport it is another sport it's a sport and right. so for me it wasn't just the glitz and the glamour. It's right. because I wanted to compete and win. You know what I was going to ask you? What about <laughs> it do you like the most? Like what what motivates you? What pushes you to, to like compete at for this, at this level? Because this is a big level. Right. right. So now that I am a national queen. Right. You know, the thing is going through what I went through, all mm -hmm. the negative adversity. OK. Uh, being the minority. Right in the pageant systems that makes back sense. in the day. Right. I'm gonna tell you how old I am, but back in the day. Right, I did. So, um, you know, being called the quote unquote N word. Right. And having it written on a mirror wow. in the dressing room, wow. having my shoes stolen. Wow. Hair pulled. Wow. I mean, lied on and just some of everything. Sad I mean, part is that's yeah. not that long ago if you really think about no, it. No, not know. really. I mean, you know, it's a shame that 
I had to be treated that way. But right. a long time ago, I learned to live from the inside out because nobody was seeing my outer beauty. Right. So once they did, though, right. they got the hang of it. You know, and it. once I got the hang of how things went, I started winning. Yeah. And I never let them kill my spirits. But you know what I like about you the most? See, I have a personal relationship with you and I know you. So it's like your 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 personal skills and then your flamboyant like personality. Like you win people over with that smile and people that charm <laughs> and you force love on people. Well, they some people they need that. And they don't do even know that. it's you know what it's medicine. For it them. is. It's healing. It is right? healing. And so when mm -hmm. you give them something that they never had, they it's like you're forcing love on them. It's like, wow, they needed that. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Because, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, coming in, back in, I took like a 10 year hiatus. Right. So coming back, okay, I came back as a plus size woman, okay. curvy woman. Right. And I embraced it. And so my first time out, I won, mm -hmm. you know, praise God, I won. And But my thing is getting back in, I see women still who need to be lifted up. And so my biggest inspiration is to empower. Right. And because this pageant, the all world beauties system, their three pillars are that they stand on, okay. that they're aligned with, right. inner beauty, empowerment, and service. Got it. So okay. that's me. Right, you the representation of it. So, you know, I represent them, they represent me. And that's what I tell everyone, never enter a system or anything in your life that not only you can represent, but if it doesn't represent you, Right. It's not for you. It's not for you. That's right. Right. So you've been doing this how long? There you go. See, there you go. I get, you, know, <laughs> you know I'm going to get you. You knew <laughs> before you, you came there here I was going go. to ask these questions. <laughs> yes. You, it, know you know what it shows, though? It, it just shows how- Over like, 30 years. Right. See- it, Over 30 years. But that's experience. professional. That's that's professional. Yeah. You're seasoned. I'm seasoned. Right. I'm, I'm seasoned. That's seasoned. Nothing wrong with that. That's right. Right. So, <laughs> how, like, like, where has it taken you, though? I mean, has it taken you to different cities, different states? Has it, you know? Oh, man. Yes. My God. You know what? I met a lady. And I have to give her props. All because right. this lady was everything to okay. me. A pageantry. Once I left all that negative adversity, but I actually won right. with all that negative adversity. Okay. You know, happened to glue rhinestones to my feet when they stole my wow. shoes. I walk on point and still won the pageant. Wow. So LaGlinda, her name, LaGlinda Jatala La is her name. Shout out to LaGlinda. Yes, yeah, shout out to LaGlinda in all the way Oklahoma. And this lady showed me the right way. Mm -hmm. She showed me how to do the pageant right. system from the ground up. Wow. But what she did was take me by the hand after I won her national pageant, that mm -hmm. is, she mm -hmm. was like, okay, you're not leaving. You're, I'm going to take you everywhere. Right. So I traveled. Pageantry afforded me to travel all over the United States. Wow. Performing, uh, emceeing. Wow. So and hosting. then it took me to Hollywood to emcee the fashion shows. Wow. It took me to meet the president of the International Pageant Association. Right. Sing with the likes for. Muhammad Ali, wow, Jodie Foster, just I've I've been able to meet Aretha Franklin. That's big, yeah, that's <laughs> and, really. Huge. I mean, I got to meet Aretha, <laughs> right, right, through pageantry and through just my voice. Too. Right, See, right. We gonna get to that. But. We gonna get to that. We gonna get to that. That's a whole other. That could be a whole another segment yeah, by itself. Thank you. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I mean, but what? Tell us what goes all into preparation for a pageant that for all those that don't know, like it, people just see you, right? And they go, oh, wow, she's pretty. I like mm. her dress. That's nice. That's I love her hair, right? And they don't right. know the work, the effort that goes no. into actually putting it all together. Please break it down for us. Woo. Well, <laughs> okay. And when you see those beautiful ladies on the screen, mm -hmm. you know, that's work. That's work. Nine times out of 10, they have on probably one or two girdles <laughs> underneath. We call it the armor of God. Armor of God. <laughs> Y'all heard it. <laughs> right here. It's the armor of God. That's per Pamela Irvin. Hi, Pam. And so the thing is, there's there's a lot. You want to have the right hair do. You want your, your clothing. Do you work with a stylist or do you have something you do yourself? You know what? My mom has been my stylist. Really? Through the years. 
Wow. And every time when I don't use her, I don't win. Oh boy, that should tell you something. Yes. You go, mom. Yes. Mm, yes. <laughs> and, um, yes. I had to think about that. I was like, hmm, what am I winning? <laughs> and you're not styling me. But so now, okay, so there's so many people in this pageant, right? How many people actually use like a like someone to help them? Or is it some is it self uh you know, is it something they, they, they do themselves or do they hire a stylist? Uh, Some people do. Uh -huh. Some people hire a coach, a pageant coach. OK, I know. I was, so the coach know the right does, question to ask. OK, the coach pretty much if you have a really good coach, uh -huh. then he uh -huh. or she right. will guide you in modeling your stage. Right. Your styling, meaning your clothing. OK. They might even steer you to the right makeup artist because then you have the stylist who works on the modeling and the, maybe the clothes. Right. But then you have someone different for makeup and hair. Okay. Okay. So. I have a question for you. How do you prepare? Now, this one is a little different <laughs> because you have to get to know the person, right? But mm -hmm. how do you prepare someone when they do the talking segment, you know, like they ask you those <laughs> little, those little, like one or two questions mm -hmm. and it separates you from the next contestant. Oh yeah. How, how, I mean, like, <laughs> how do you prepare somebody to answer a question that they don't know what's coming? Well, the thing is in this organization, mm -hmm. I can honestly say that all the questions are character based. Oh, okay. Because they want to know who's going to wear the crown. Right who is going to represent their brand the best. So you can't choose a person to represent your brand by asking them who the 10th president, how okay. would you know about that person? They're right. character based. There's no character in that. No, right. I mean, anybody can study from a book and then they say, okay, right. this is who it is, or Google it on the side. So you know? these are questions designed to get to know the, indi the individual. individual. Okay, yes. All right. you so you can't really know. prepare that. You can't really prepare for that. You, sh you know what, there's, you. You shouldn't have to. Okay. It should just be authentic. Authentic. Okay. It should yes. be you. Transparent. Transparent. That's right. All right. I, I can see that. I can <laughs> see that. Because you can't really generate or like make up a queen. No. A queen just is. Pretty much. Okay. I mean, there's other things like, you know, modeling. There's some people who haven't modeled a day in their life. Right. So they need coaching, but that can be fixed. Okay. Someone from the inside to represent your brand. Right. You need to see who they are. Like for me, now I'm the executive director of California All World Beauties and Man of Distinction. All so right. I want to know who is wearing my crown, you know, or the men, the stole. Your brand. My brand. Right. I want to know who's going to represent it well. You know, if you have somebody that just speaks in broken English or mm -hmm. can't get a, a word out when the question is about them. Right. Then, you know. That makes sense. That makes sense. That's, they're, they're not ready. Okay, so let's switch in gears here a little bit. When it goes into like the different categories that would make up um, the all world beauty, right? So there's different like with, with a talent. So what are some of the talents that they look for? Okay, so in the all world beauties, uh, man of distinction system, talent is not a part of the overall score that you need for the crown. Okay. It is in the optional competitions. Optional. Which all the contestants have a various amount of optional competitions, okay. which their choice, they can decide to do them or, mm. or not. A lot of people do take part in it because people have talent. Right. You know, and so they want to show it. And right. it's a good way to break the ice. Right. Especially if you have never done a pageant, get up there on that stage and get the feel for it. Right. I always recommend at least do one optional. Okay. At least one. So for the ladies, okay, is what what okay, is is comedy one? Oh, I did stand up comedy in Vegas. Okay, you did comedy. I sure did. Okay. I had to do three talents. Okay, what and were the three? And one could I did, well, I had to do I did a jazz song. Yeah. I did a uh R&B song. Okay, so you sang. It had to be if you sang two songs, it had to be different genres of music. Okay. Third talent could not be singing. Okay, so you did? Stand-up comedy. Wow, okay. I know you now. And it was very, yeah. So I know you You can be funny. I know you can, because you got a good wit to you. Yes. See, all right. And it was all about pageantry. Okay, so can I do one thing? <laughs> I, wanna, I wanna ask one thing. Can you just sing me 
and I'm putting you on the spot because we talk about this. Yes. I have to. You know I'm gonna do you that. Put me on the spot. If it's just I have. Listen, you can sing Mary had a little lamb. I don't even care because I love your voice. Oh. Pick any la- anything you <laughs> want. I don't care where it's from. I don't care what it is. Just let the people give get a taste of Samantha Alexis, and we're gonna play your song later too. See. He's putting me on the spot. See, I, I don't even know why you're trying to. You know, because they need to know what I know. Spot. What do they know? Hit it. No, 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 no. No, okay. Let's see here. Let me let me go back. Since the Aretha movie is out and Aretha has been reborn again, I guess it would be fitting to, you know, give a little something. From the queen. All right, there you go. I From like a that. Queen. From a queen. From a queen. <laughs> From a queen to a queen. All right. Let's see. Hmm. Looking out on the morning rain, I used to feel so uninspired when I knew I had to face another day. Lord, it made me feel so tired before the day i met you life was so unkind but you're the key to my peace of mind you make me feel you make me feel you make me feel like a natural Woman. Woo! And the crowd goes wild, Woo, baby. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, y'all. You see what I'm saying? That ain't, listen, we are in a music studio, but oh, we're yeah. not in a recording studio. No, we're not. So we're live. <laughs> that was live. Ooh. Anyway, that was beautiful. Oh, thank you. I think, I think, um, I think that was just the queen coming think, out of me. I that think, was the queen. I think, um, I think, uh, <laughs> she just got a little, her toe just twinkled right now. Aretha's toe. Just, oh, yeah, it, it see. Moved. It did. And mine did. If it hurt, then uh-uh. mine did. <laughs> Toes twinkling, ladies and gentlemen. What else can you ask for? So let's talk about this music for a little bit. All right. So obviously, you just gave him a little taste. I want to know, like, how did that come about? How did you discover you had a voice like that? Oh, man. Um. Wow. I was a little girl, and my aunt had this album in this red cover and I was like what is that it was Lady Sings the Blues oh the whole soundtrack from Mm -hmm. the movie with the songs right and as a little girl I fell in love with that those records it was a collection right so before I even saw the movie I had this whole album I mean I she gave it to me she Mm -hmm. wound up gifting it to me Mm mm-hmm and I must have played and sang with that thing until the album was white. Wow. <laughs> and so it was you just fell in love with it. Big old album. You remember the albums back right? then. So I fell in love with it. Wow. And believe it or not, that's pretty much when my love started. I mean, I sang with my great grandmother in mm. the church. Okay. But my love came, it was something about that that record. In the beginning. That was it. The Billie how, Holiday. How, the, how old were you? About. Ooh, when I first, I think about seven. Ooh, see, that's tender, very tender About age. seven, I yeah. fell in love with it, you know. Right, Look, right. you made me want to sing right. it. <laughs> so, so would you say you 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 identify more like with the Mo, the Motown sound? Are you talking about the the, the, Mir- the Supremes? Are you talking about uh, Diana Ross? Are you talking like Mary Wilson? Are you talking like, give me some, who are, you, who are your the people that you admire or people that you uh, kind of, you know, look to? Well, you know, the thing is, with me in the beginning, I was exposed to all facets of music. Okay. I was in the opera program when I was like about eight or nine years old because okay. my voice, they heard it. The San Francisco Opera, I was in school in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. So they would come over to the school and just to, you know, sing and have a little mm-hmm. program for the kids, right. you know. And it was me and another little boy mm-hmm. named Gary. Shout out to Gary. Hi. Gary Little. And um, we both had these high voices and they just took interest in us. Mm-hmm. And we were the two that got chosen to do this program with the San Francisco Opera. Oh, nice. So okay. I was able to have the classical training in there. That helped. So it does. Yeah. It helps. And but from there, pretty much, I mean, my mom is a singer. Right. My grandfather sang with the coasters. So it basically it runs so in your family. It's yes. It's, and we, you know, everybody either is 
a musician. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we have drummers, we right. have keyboardists, we right. have bass players. Right. <laughs> Musicians. Mm-hmm. So and, and vocalists. My right. like my grandfather sang with the coasters. Right. And so and my mom used to sing with Martha Wash for a wow. while. Wow. Everybody for a knows who Martha Wash is. Wow. And they went to school together and they right. sang together. Mm-hmm. So it was just we had music every single day. So it's in your background. Yeah. yeah. Every yeah. day we listen to music. Wow. So where has that taken you just musically? I mean, like, have you played in bands before? Have you done your own music? Have you, I mean, talk to us a little bit about that. Well, you know, I actually, there was a few things I've done. Well, I, I'm adventurous. So right. I was in New York. We slept on the ground for three what? days. Not for you. Audition. Not you. I got in. Long story short, I asserted myself right. and got the lead role when I was supposed to be a dancer. Oh, wow. And wind up getting the lead role singing because I memorized everything. And, right. And wind up on a stage with George Benson. Oh, my gosh. Legend. Yeah. And it was like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. That was just, you know, some of the things where music has taken me. Mm-hmm. Music has taken me, like I said, all over the United States. Um, has taken me to perform with so many different celebrities. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, from the catwalks, <laughs> singing right. on the catwalks, just opening up for various people, temptations. Um, also, uh, the Daz Band. And oh, wow, big. Just okay. the whole bunch, Cheryl Lynn, and just, it's a countless amount of people I've been right. able to open up for. I had my own band, Love Machine, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. where we traveled around. Okay. So we were really popular. And then... Plus my Latin band, Third Soul. Okay, all right. And we were very, very popular. Put out several CDs. Okay. And um, and I got known on the Latin side of okay. things. I started singing in Spanish, Espanol. Espanol. So I became, you know, the everybody's uh, hermana. Hermana. <laughs> Chocolate hermana. Right, Chocolate hermana. <laughs> I became that, that lady. Mamacita. But also the tributes as well, um, singing at a young age too. With mm-hmm. the I didn't start out singing with just a you know a small band. Mm-hmm. I started out singing with a symphony, with a big like an orchestra. orchestra, an orchestra. Oh, okay, all right. The, they were so huge, mm-hmm. and I don't know. I think that's why I lost some of my hearing. That big old horn section the horn blew your ears out. <laughs> I can see that. But it's been quite a experience, uh-huh. and music has afforded me just to right. keep people lift it i think that's the biggest reason why i do it okay the reaction of the people the reaction of the people you love bringing joy to the people oh yeah and i have with my aretha franklin tribute my one woman show i love billy holiday so mm-hmm. much that i had a one woman show that performed in marriott downtown oakland mm-hmm. for and i did billy holiday one woman show wow. billy holiday i've done the, the whitney houston glass night and the pips tribute nice music hats brought me to have a relationship with you <laughs> right right all right so it's 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 a journey and we're still on it right exactly still on this journey i'm excited to uh hit i i have a song here from you um it's called let's pray where'd you get that uh you know what everybody it's the new buzz on the street everybody's it's the talking buzz about this. on the street i love it it's a great song but i want you to talk to us about the message behind this song oh man you know what we are here today and so many people are trying to go back in time with all this racism right so the thing is is the song is expressing you should be colorblind right you got to see the signs okay we all all need to pray all right for a new day right okay (laughs) okay (laughs) (laughs) pun uh, pun intended no pun intended (laughs) right I mean, you have to take yourself back. Remember in the day yeah. we used to go outside and play. Look, right. there's a lyric. Let me drop in the lyric. And But the thing is, back when we didn't have to worry about right. if we were going to lock our door or That's somebody true. was going to steal our child or, right. or, you know, right. or if you didn't have anything, the neighbor had it. Right. You know, we didn't have to worry about all the people shooting each other everywhere. Right. Things have really changed. And now we, we're seeing people getting killed on TV and that's just so bad. It's and almost children, a, it's almost a norm. It, yes, and that's bad. And that's terrible. That should not be the norm. Right. So this song is to try to get people to 
go back in time when things were when the world was a better place. Got it. I mean, that's that's an amazing song. I love the lyrics in that. I mean, that's something that we all need um, to understand and put forth right in our life because without that, you know, we'll, we're we're not unity. We're not we're not one. We don't operate as one. We, we don't think like that. We don't embrace that. Right. You know, love is something that you know people. You'd be surprised at people that need it that don't know they need it. Right. You know, and and learning how to treat their their brother, man, their sister. You know how how to actually. Like the more you know about another race, you can understand them in a way where you're not so judgmental. That's true. And I just want to add, I have to add, that song was written by Mr. Rudy Ramos right. Sr. All right. And president of Somar Records. Okay. All right. I know Rudy. And that's very my well. label. Yeah. <laughs> and um he really the message, we all came third soul kind of we all came up with something right. in that song because here we are a group that looks like a melting pot, right? right? So who better to portray it? And actually today when I leave here, I'll be performing Let's Pray for the city of Hayward and my other original song, Right, Don't Feel Right, Gotta Change It. Got so it. the songs that I'm putting out now are songs that have a message, right? positive message because we need to, right. to wake up, Changes you know? Needed. <laughs> we Changes need change needed. Change is definitely needed. So. I feel like if we want to make songs, we can make stuff to dance and have fun, but there should be something in our rep repertoire. Right, some content. Yes, that says, you know, let's embrace each other again. Let's right. love each other. And right. So, you know, there's a time for everything. Right, you know? right. I have one last question before we wrap it up. I want to know what is the, what like, what is the difference between like your music and your pageantry, like they're both so amazing. <laughs> like, what, what, what's the, oh. which one do you like more, or do you, do you embrace them the same? Or, I mean, talk to us about that. You know what? It's, I don't love one more than the other because they kind of go together. I mean, you're so good because I can do you're, both. You're good. In you're, it. you're so good I can at both. Them. <laughs> you're so good at both. Yes, and it's almost <laughs> like you know, like, like, oh, how do you pick and choose? you know, what you're really good at and other people think you're good at. And how do you go like, you know what? I think I like the pageantry more. No, 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 I think I like the music more. Like, is it like Reese's Pieces? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, especially since I don't eat them. <laughs> but I know E.T. does, right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know what? For me, it's always went together because like uh -huh. I told you, pageantry afforded me to travel all over the United States singing. Right. So I correlate the two together. So you and just now, accept them for just- I have my own pageant now, I can sing anytime I want to. Right. <laughs> so, right. But the, I don't love one more than the other. They're both special to me. Okay. So they're both your babies. Yeah, both of them are my babies. And now this new one is my, my baby. Right. Okay. All right. Well, guess what? We're gonna have to cut it a little bit short today. No, I I'm really not going. I don't you. even want. I know mm -mm. she kicking like a baby, y'all. <laughs> no, not today. We're not leaving. <laughs> no, we're gonna. I tell you what, we're gonna do a part two. Part two. To be continued. To be continued. Absolutely, ladies and when gentlemen. When I come back as the international queen, right? Right, an international <laughs> queen. You, but you know what though? You're always a queen. Yeah. Always a queen. When you That's, go home, when you're in the kitchen, yes. When, when you are cooking in the kitchen, you're still a queen. That's right. That's how we're going to do that. That's I just want to say thank you. That, look. <laughs> thank you for being a part of the Kimball Hooker show here at KCAT 15. We're going to list all your information so everyone can contact you in the description below. Thank you for having me. You're so welcome. We're going to do it again. You look glamorous, beautiful. Thank you for sharing everything that you know about pageantry, music and so forth. And we're going to do it again. That's right. That's the only way to do it. Just do it again. Do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. You know what? <laughs> that was off the cuff right there. That's how I will. <laughs> She's silly. We're going to talk about that. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Samantha Alexis. Ooh, Samantha Alexis. She's a fabulous girl. Thank you for coming to the Kimball Hooker Show. We will see you again next time. You just heard the Kimball Hooker Show here on KCAT Radio. Explore all our KCAT original programming at kcat.org slash radio.